and God bless you, Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. We are truly grateful for God blessing us to see another day. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast on this morning. The Word of God says in Psalms 1 and 40, excuse me, Psalms 145, it says, I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. And people of God, God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. Wherever you are this morning, whether you're at home, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your car, in your bathroom, outside, wherever you are viewing the broadcast this morning, go ahead and put your hands together and give God some praise. Begin to set the atmosphere in your home for praise and worship unto our God because he is truly worthy to be praised. I am now going to turn over, turn the service over to our minister of music who will usher us into the presence of God and prepare the way for the word. Praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah on this second Sunday in September. The word of God says that we should what into his gates with thanksgiving and his voice for praise. Help me in this praise this morning. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise. Oh, 
and we can count on him. Do you know that? Can you help me finish singing that? Every word of 
worship is to our God. And yes, we thank you for smiling on us this morning. Holy Spirit, as I stand and I speak forth this word. 
God, I'm leaning and depending and trusting in no other but you. Thank you, Father God, for this day. And thank you, Father God, for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. First, give reverence and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom all blessings flow. To the angel of this house, Pastor Terrell, to his lovely wife, Lady Terrell, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we also honor and thank God for our deacons, for our mothers, for the trustees, for our ushers. We thank God for everyone. We show sure thank God for everyone is somebody. We thank God for the ministers, those who labor in the gospel with me as well. We just give God thanks for every one of you. We thank God for all of you who have tuned in this morning to view our broadcast. We pray that something would be said that would encourage you, inspire you, but most of all, would draw you closer to God. Let us go to the word of God on this morning. This morning, our message is coming from the book of Acts, chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 4. That's Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. According to the New King James Version of the Bible, it reads, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. People of God, for the time that is allowed for us to share together on this morning, I would like to speak from this thought. Lord, we need a move. People of God, if there ever was a time that we need to experience a move of God, the time is now. As we look around and consider all that's going on in the world, all that's going on in our communities, all that's going on in our own life, and as we look at what's coming from the White House, from number 45, I'm sure we could unanimously agree that we need a move of God to take place so that things can change and begin to operate and function according to the will of God. Beloved, we need a move of God because some people have become anxious, fearful, stressed, depressed, and they're feeling hopeless. We need a move of God because some people are battling and struggling mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We need a move of God because some people have become corrupt, confused, and consumed with hatred and violence. We need a move of God because people are turning away from the church and they're turning to the streets all because they need to experience a move of God. They need to seek after the one who is able to keep them in perfect peace. They need to seek after the one who is able to change their life. They need to seek after the one who is able to supply their every need. The one who is able to, through his mighty power within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Lord, we need a move. Beloved, we need a move of God in our situations. We need God to move in our life. We need God to make himself known by moving supernaturally in our midst. I believe Tasha Cobb said it best when she said in her song, we need a move by saying, we are here for you. Come 
and do what you do. We set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do because we need a move. And I just want to ask right along in here, how many of y'all need to experience a move of God? Lord, we need a move. Throughout the Bible, there are many who experienced a move of God. We look at Ezekiel there in the valley of dry bones. He experienced a move of God. We look at Abraham and Isaac up on the mountain. They experienced a move of God as God caused a ram to appear in the bush. We look at Moses. He experienced a move of God in the departure of the Red Sea. We look at the woman with the spirit of infirmity. She experienced the move of God as God loosed her from what had her bent. We see the disciples experienced the move of God at sea as Jesus came from the hinder part of the ship and he spoke peace to the wind and to the waves. And people of God, in our text today, we see a move of God taking place. Looking at the text, we notice that when the time of Pentecost had fully come, this meaning the time when God would equip his church with the power of his spirit so that he will be glorified among the nations, we find the 120 believers, including the disciples, together on one accord in one place, praying. People of God, this signifies that their minds, their affections, their desires, and their wishes were all on one accord. Beloved, they all had the same view. They had the same desire. They had the same prayer unto God. And every one of them uttered it from their heart. People of God, there is power in unified prayer. When believers come together on one accord to pray, you can expect a move of God to happen. God is a God of unity. He is a God who hears and answers prayer. For the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Beloved, these people are on one accord in one place praying. They're not feuding over one another's opinions. They're not in competition with one another, nor are they trying to impress one another. The Bible says they were all with one accord. Beloved, in other words, they all had the same mindset and they all had the same spirit. These believers are together on one accord praying. And as they are praying, something begins to happen. The text says in verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house, the whole house, where they were sitting. People of God, anytime we lift up our prayer, Anytime we lift up our praise and anytime we lift up our worship unto God, we can expect to experience the presence of God. God opened up the heavens and poured out his spirit in the place where they were sitting. Beloved, they began to experience a move of God happening in their midst. Now, I don't know about you this morning, but I need to experience a move of God in my life. You see, I know there's somebody out there with a heavy heart. I know there's somebody out there with a troubled mind. I know somebody is facing a difficult time right now. Somebody is in need of a breakthrough. 
Somebody needs a touch from the Lord. And if that is you today, I encourage you to get into the presence of God, petition him in prayer, and cry out, Lord, I need a move. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, we need a move. Beloved, when God moves by his spirit, he will fill us and ignite and intensify our prayer, our praise, and our worship. Beloved, we must get in the spirit and allow the spirit to fill us so that we can experience the power and presence of God moving in our life. These believers, they're on one accord. They're in one place and they're praying. They're praising and worshiping God. And as a result of them praying, praising, and worshiping God, God moved and filled the place with his spirit. But the text says in verse 3 and 4, it says, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one set up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Beloved, God poured out his Spirit. His Spirit set up on each of them. And his Spirit filled them. They all experienced a move of God. But over the place is filled with the Holy Spirit. They are consumed with the Holy Spirit. And they are operating in the Holy Spirit. The B part of verse 4 says again. It says, and they began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. People of God, when we are filled with the spirit, not only will it empower our worship, but it will empower our works. As the Holy Spirit filled them, he empowered them to speak the word in different languages. God, through the filling of the Holy Spirit, equips them with inspired speech for ministry. Beloved, as the Spirit inspires their speech, the believers are speaking in human languages other than their own. And people of God, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to do great works for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. We are empowered to lead lost souls to Christ. And we are empowered for the work of the ministry. Beloved, when the Holy Spirit fills us, not only are our works empowered, but catch this, our words are empowered. The Bible says in Acts 4 and 31, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Beloved, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to go forth and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with the holy boldness. People of God, with everything that's going on in the world, with everything that's going on in our communities and with everything that's going on in our lives, we need to hear a word from the Lord. You see, God's word is the only solid foundation on which we can stand. God's word can give us that peace that passes all understanding. God's word is the source of our strength. God's word will give us hope. God's word is the answer and solution to everything we face in this life. For the Bible says, blessed 
are they that hear the word of God and keep it. The Bible says the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Beloved, we need a move of God so we can be empowered to stand on the word. How many out there know that you can take God at his word? As we look back at the text, we see that these people, they are amazed at what they are hearing. The Spirit of God is at work, and the people are being impacted by this experience. The text says in verses 6 and 8 and 12 and 13, it says, And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? Verse 12 says, So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Otherwise, mock, otherwise mocking said they are full of new wine. That's what they said. The multitude, people of God, that has gathered are amazed at what they are witnessing. They were amazed, people of God. They don't understand what's taking place. They don't understand that it's just a move of God. They were amazed, and some are in doubt, and some are mocking, saying they are full of wine. They see how these who are under the influence of the spirit are acting and they're thinking they're full of wine. They're thinking that they are drunk, but no, they're not drunk off of wine. I mean, they're drunk off the spirit. They're moving according to the Holy Spirit. They have experienced a move of God. And people of God, I'm here to tell you that when God fills us with his spirit, his spirit empowers our witness. His spirit causes us to experience a move of God in our life that is profound. Beloved, when we open up ourselves and yield to the Holy Spirit, we can't help but to be a witness for the Lord. People might not understand what is going on in and through our life, but they can't deny the move of God being manifested before them. Beloved, when God moves, there is noticeable evidence. These people are witnessing a move of God taking place. And beloved, we see the evidence because the believers have been filled with the Spirit and they have been powerfully enabled to bear witness to Christ and his gospel. Beloved, the multitude is witnessing a manifestation of the Spirit. This move of God has them dumbfounded. Each of them in his or her own language hears the wonders of God and sees the great deeds of God. Lord, we need a move. Beloved, God wants us to experience a move. He wants to fill us and use us for his glory. God is looking for willing vessels he can pour into and manifest himself through. God is looking for a church that is filled with his presence. But the question we must ask ourselves is, are we willing to get on one accord? and allow the spirit to have his way? Are we willing to move self out of the way, push our agendas to the side, and let God and his agenda be exalted? Are we willing to do away with man-made traditions, grab a hold of the gospel truth, and carry out the will of God? Beloved, we need a move so we as the body of Christ can move to the next level. We need a move so we can be spirit-filled, spirit-led, and spirit-minded. 
We need a move so we can draw closer to God. We need a move so we can handle the cares of life. We need a move so we can overcome what we're going through. We need a move so we can defeat our enemies. We need a move that will destroy COVID-19. Beloved, we need a move that will lift our hearts from despair. We need a move of God that will help us weather the storms of life. We need a move so we can be delivered from this pandemic. Beloved, we need a move so we can experience a breakthrough. We need a move so that things will shift in our favor. We need a move so miracles will be manifested. Lord, we need a move so that we can experience your presence, your power, your peace, and your glory. Lord, we need a move. For the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. The Bible says with God, all things are possible. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Beloved, we need a move. Beloved, we need to believe and seek God for a move. We need to seek him diligently for a move and God will reward us if we believe. People of God, the text says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, sometimes God moves suddenly, and sometimes we've got to wait patiently and expectantly. But the Bible says in this case, and suddenly, God moved immediately. He moved right away. There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. Beloved, these people were on one accord in one place and they experienced a move of God. Beloved, God will move on our behalf if we believe. So let us get on one accord. Let us pray and let us believe God for a move. Some of you out there this morning listening to this message, you need a move. You need God to move in your life. You need God to move in your situations. Whatever it is, God is able if you believe. So today, if you're one that needs to know this God who is able to move mightily in your life, you want to come to know him for yourself and experience him for yourself. We offer him to you this morning. We extend the invitation to you to come to know the God who is able to move, the God who is able to make things happen, the God who is able to save your soul, the God who is able to change your life, the God who is able to save your soul, the God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. So will you come? Come on to Christ right now. The extended the invitation is extended to you today.